So we've talked briefly about some of the various settlements across the system within the Expanse, but I figured today we could take a look at one of the first ones that was settled by humanity. Let's take a look at Earth's moon, Luna. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. Now, before we begin, I want to address something that you may have noticed if you watch my videos regularly. Lighting is a little bit different. I want to apologize for that. I did just have one of my set lights go out, so I'll just have to make do, and hopefully soon I'll be able to get a new bulb in. So Luna is the only moon of Earth, but it's also the largest moon within the entirety of the solar system. It serves as a jumping off point in between Earth and the rest of the system, as it likely will in reality, and it is the largest celestial body other than Earth occupied by the United Nations. Luna actually provides the UN with something they don't really get anywhere else. You see, unlike the other powers in the system, which have various low-gravity celestial bodies at their disposal, the belt has many of the moons of Jupiter, and Mars has Mars itself, and the moons of Mars, Luna is the only outpost within the UN's territory that is really large enough to carry out large-scale infrastructure projects, but still has less than 1g of gravity. This makes it perfect for things like shipyards and other large industrial projects that may be trickier on Earth. Luna was originally colonized in the mid-21st century with a facility that was originally scientific and military in nature. However, as humanity spread out into the solar system, Luna became a more important outpost. It happens to be a fairly perfect jumping off point for missions into the deeper solar system, and that's one of the reasons why it became such an important piece of territory for the UN. And as they were setting up colonies on Mars and even on the moons of Jupiter, the starting place for a lot of the missions out there was Luna. Several major cities would form on Luna's surface over the next couple hundred years, but none would be quite as significant as Lovell, likely named after Jim Lovell, one of the Apollo astronauts. Lovell would serve in a lot of ways as the de facto capital of the moon, and as Earth is bombarded by asteroids fired by the Free Navy, Luna's city of Lovell becomes sort of the de facto capital of the UN. Lovell had expansive civilian infrastructure, but also a pretty big set of military shipyards and docks that could accommodate the UN's navy. On top of that, Luna became the base point for the Bush shipyards, which were responsible for building most of the UN's warships, as well as a lot of warships for private entities like the Protogen Corporation. But even beyond the industrial importance of Luna as a place to build warships and other vessels, as well as a sort of industrial hub away from Earth, it also became the perfect meeting place in between diplomats from Earth and diplomats from out in the rest of the solar system. Unlike Earth, it doesn't have 1g of crushing gravity and instead has far less. This makes it the perfect spot for diplomats from the belt or even Mars to come meet with Earth diplomats, since they wouldn't have to deal with the harsher conditions on the surface of Earth itself. As a result, it's likely that a lot of the other powers in the system had embassies specifically on Luna, as opposed to really building and staffing full embassies on Earth, or at least they had both, uh, with the idea that the one on Luna may be their main embassy at some point. But this also played into the economic design of the system as well. Lots of belter ships that would be bringing in goods from the fringes of the solar system to be delivered to Earth would likely drop them off on Luna, and Earth-based companies would ship them from there to their destinations on the Blue Planet. This would limit the crews of belter vessels' exposure to 1G as much as possible and keep them in an environment they're familiar with that's more accommodating to their physical structure. It's known that the UN actually operated a prison on Luna for this reason. It would be inhumane to keep belters detained by UN forces on Earth where the gravity itself is killing them, and instead a lot of them are kept at prisons on Luna where they're more uh, uh, capable of dealing with the environment around them. So Luna played a crucial role in the economics, the politics, and even the history of the system as one of the first places humanity set foot beyond the bounds of Earth. And while it was occupied by uh, members of every government from across the system in various embassies and consulates across the moon, it was still firmly under the control of the United Nations, the government that controls Earth, one of the two major powers of the inner planets. And if you'd like to learn more about the UN, what they're like, how their society works, I'll leave a link up here to my video all on that. 
And I want you to let me know down in the comments whether you think the UN was using the moon properly. Do you have anything else you'd think would be perfect to do up there? Or do you think they basically used it for everything they could? And if you have anything else you'd like to see me cover in The Expanse, leave it down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.